Oil is the fuel that provides our economic growth. It is responsible for high productivity in agriculture, manufacturing, and the basis for the affluence of our everyday lives. It is for this reason that it has been labeled an important national security issue and something the public becomes concerned about when prices get high, impacting our ability to drive and to heat our homes. These are some of the many reasons why it is important to know how long we will have this black gold available. It is confusing for the layperson to hear conflicting reports from energy experts, some who say we have over a hundred years of oil left, and some who say we are nearly running out. There is an entire association devoted to the study of peak oil, the concept that we are reaching or have reached a point at which daily production will level off and then decline. How are we to make sense of the different opinions? First off, how can there be so many different opinions? It's because of the different assumptions used by these experts. Luckily for us, there's a framework known as systems thinking that allows even the layperson to understand these assumptions and then build a more rigorous set of assumptions about this or any topic. These sets of assumptions about how something works are sometimes called mental models. This learning lab, which you can access at the URL shown here, will help you develop your own mental model about oil reserves. Let's enter the lab. On this screen are a set of links you can use to explore this topic, including some helpful resources on the left. First, let's explore perhaps the most common calculation used for estimating how long oil reserves, or just about any other finite non-renewable resource, will last. The reserve to production equation. The equation can be derived from a very simple algebraic equation. Take our estimate of how much is still in the ground and divide it by how much we are using each year. That will tell us how many years are left. Simple. We can use the systems thinking language to visually map out this equation. I will click here to show you. First, we'll use something called a stock, which is like a bathtub, to calculate how much the reserves are in the ground. So this bathtub here holds oil instead of water. The drain out of it, we'll call it a flow, is the amount removed or drained out of the reserves per year, in this case through the um, activity of producing and then consuming. So, if we take 100 billion barrels of oil in the ground and divide it by 10 billion of barrels um, removed per year, that would say we would have 10 years remaining. So it's very simple. So let's go back up. Before clicking on the button below, think about what assumptions the reserved production equation assumes. Well, we're going to assume that, um, first of all, that we know how much oil is in the ground, that it's precise, that you're going to recover it all. One thing that's a big assumption is that production and consumption is going to remain constant into the future. Many things might impact that, including economic growth. There is no law of diminishing returns is another assumption. In other words, that as you extract more and more, maybe it becomes harder and harder to get more out. As you get to the bottom of the bucket of oil, perhaps it's harder to get the last drops out. So that's an assumption that's made here. Another assumption is that it doesn't become more expensive to get those last drops out. And finally, um, an assumption which we're not going to explore here, but which is worth exploring at some point, is the ability to substitute different types of technologies or energy sources, which as energy becomes more expensive, perhaps there will be a shift to substituting. This is a control panel that allows us to set several parameters and assumptions and then simulate how long it will be before we run out of oil. We'll start with using the U.S. Energy Information Administration's 2008 estimates for remaining reserves, 1.2 million million barrels, and an annual consumption of 31,163 million barrels per year. If we simulate under these assumptions, you see that the reserve lasts approximately 39 years. We can see this information in these numeric displays here and over here in a table, which will actually compare the results um, across different scenarios. It'll be very useful in a minute. Well, again, remember that we assume that we can recover 100%. What if we can only recover 90%? So we'll change that assumption, simulate again, and now you see that instead of running out in 39 years, we run out in about 35. Now, one of the assumptions that we're making here is that it's um, the annual consumption rate is constant at 31,000. One thing that um, economists suggest is that um, our economy is tied very heavily to the use of oil as, a, as the, sort of an input into the system. And if we want an economic growth that's a comfortable, healthy growth, which folks say is about 3%, then you might want to expect that 
oil itself would increase in terms of consumption by about 3%. So I'm going to slide this over to 3%. And before going into this, let's just kind of walk through what this assumption looks like using the systems thinking language. So we can assume that the annual consumption is also a stock. It's how much is used per year. And we'll use a flow in this case to add more to the consumption. We'll assume that there's an annual growth percent increase. And this is a reinforcing loop. That little uh, arrow drawn back from the annual consumption to the change in consumption creates a reinforcing loop, which with a 3% annual growth might make the annual consumption look something like this over the course of you know 100 years or so. That's a pretty severe increase. So let's just see what the impact might be on the reserves and how long it will last. So go ahead, take a guess. Now I'll simulate it. Wow, we run out instead of in 39 years, which was our original, or even our 35 years of the more recent set of assumptions, now it's in 24 years. This change into 24 years is a, a pretty remarkable drop, almost a 40% drop over the original, and one which we might um, use as cause for concern, that we might be running out pretty soon. Something to consider, however, is that there might be some diminishing returns, and let's just explore what that set of assumptions might look like. So we'll start with our basic model, and you can see the, the process here is you start with a basic model and continue to add or challenge the assumptions in it. And that creates a nice disciplined approach to thinking about things. So if we assume that as the bucket of reserves gets more and more empty, productivity also goes down, that would have some impact over the actual consumption. We might assume that the actual consumption here might get smaller and that um, the rate at which um, it's produced would go down. So let's go ahead, we'll simulate this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this set of diminishing returns over. We're going to assume that um, as you run out, costs go up, and that that might go up, let's say, 30-fold. So um, the last drop is 30 more times expensive than the first drop, or the drop, current drop. If I simulate this, you see that there's an extreme drop initially, very similar to the uh, reinforcing growth loop. However, at some point, the balancing loop kicks in and causes a diminishing returns to level off here. Now, this may impact dramatically our economy, jobs, um, the ability to produce things, might even impact our ability to produce um, you know, alternative energy um, infrastructure, which does require oil and other non-renewables as initial investments. So just think a little bit about those impacts. You could run many more experiments on this page, but I'm going to stop now. I encourage you to come to this learning lab at your leisure, share it with colleagues and friends, and to also post and make comments here on this YouTube site. I am uh, very eager to get feedback. I hope that you can see that this approach can help you not only with thinking about um, oil reserves and uh, topics associated with energy, but with just about anything where you're trying to estimate and understand how things are going to play out over time. That's it for now. Thanks for your time.